Whether you're a longtime fan or a newcomer, you've probably seen Cowboy Bebop. The show is a classic in the anime community, but does it still stand the test of time? Some anime fans seem to think Cowboy Bebop is overrated and it doesn't deserve its praise. That the ragtag crew's episodic adventures are nothing more than a disjointed mess. Others think that Cowboy Bebop is a masterpiece. So in this video, we'll break down the characters and scenes of Cowboy Bebop to see if it's just running on nostalgia or if it's as good as many people think. One of the major criticisms of Cowboy Bebop is that its characters are one-dimensional and don't change. Although I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with so-called one-dimensional characters, I don't think it's an accurate description of this cast. To prove this, we'll take a look at the leader of Bebop, Jet. Jet carries a pocket watch and has a mechanical arm from a past injury. It's pointed out in episode 16 that in the world of Bebop, Jet can get a new arm but decides to keep his mechanical arm. And in episode 10, it's shown that Jet carries a pocket watch from an old lover. Even though these things seem useless, Jet carries them around because he's a sentimental person. And this is seen when Jet meets his old lover at her shop. In this scene, Alyssa tells Jet how she's considering closing her shop. The economy is not looking too good, and visitors aren't coming in. Jet points out that the mortgage at New Island are high, and Elisa might have made the wrong decision. Jet goes over how he felt when Alyssa left him. Jet didn't want to think it was real, and asks Alyssa what went wrong. Alyssa doesn't give an answer in this scene, but tells Jet what went wrong towards the end of the episode. When this happens, we learn the flaw in Jet's character. Jet is overbearing and controlling. He always tries to guide them in the right direction, or really his direction. When Elisa tells Jet about what went wrong, Jet's pockets become empty. And I'm not talking about the poor living conditions of Bebop, but the watch. Once Jet finally gains his closure, he's able to let go of the pocket watch and move on from the past. This episode shows the growth of Jet's character and how he handles his close relationships. The Jet we see onwards is not afraid of letting go, even if this results in his own loneliness. Faye Valentine is another member of the team that's shown to grow. Faye is looking for the place where she belongs, and this means finding her past. After being caught in an accident, her body is frozen and put in a cryogenic state. Once Faye is finally reawakened, she suffers from a bad case of amnesia and is 50 years into the future. Faye spends much of her time trying to find out who she is and where she belongs, and she doesn't find that place. The reason for this is that she never needed to find that place. She was always where she belonged with Bebop. Faye doesn't find this out until the last episode of the show. The growth of Faye and Jet is apparent throughout the story. One thing that's not apparent between the crew is what they don't say to each other. One of Cowboy Bebop's strongest points is the dialogue. To avoid being put in the same vulnerable position that they were before, the crew hides their emotions behind words. Ironically, everybody in the crew shares one thing, and that is the fear of being left alone. When Ed is found, she's alone, with no one even knowing if she's a seven-foot basketball player or just an alien. Ian is basically a stray dog after being dognapped, and Spike? Well, I think his stake can be best shown in episode 12, Jupiter Jazz. In this scene, Jet and Spike argue about choosing to save Faye. Spike wants to find his lost love, Julia, and Jet wants Spike to help find Faye. When Jet doesn't get his way in convincing Spike, Jet resorts to passive-aggressive behavior, telling Spike that if he leaves, there will be no place for him to come back to. Spike doesn't listen and insults the Bebop crew. Jet gets offended, and they both end the conversation talking about how the other person is lonely and how they don't understand each other. What makes this scene special is that both characters are lying. Jet and Spike understand each other. Jet knows what it feels like to hold on to a past love, and Spike knows what it feels like to be alone. Jet even pretends he's only concerned about Faye to get back his money. Jet and Spike's conversation at the end of the episode showcases how the two hide how they feel. After their fight, Jet gives Spike a chance to come back on the ship. Spike must bring back their bounty named Grant, but Spike comes back with nothing, and Jet still lets him come back. No sorry, no my fault, no anything, because they're both hiding how they really feel. This concept comes to its best moment in episode 24, Hard Luck Woman. This episode's title is a reference to the song by Kiss. The song has many interpretations, but in the context of this show, it relates to a woman who had a string of bad relationships. This of course is in reference to Faye, who finally finds the place she's been looking for, but is not what it used to be. Before Faye goes on her trip, she tells Ed something important. She tells Ed that she has someone waiting for her. This person becomes her father after she reunites with him, but Ed is not really on his mind. Even though this is true, Ed chooses to follow her heart and follow her father, even though he's not really the person waiting for her. This brings us to the best scene of Cowboy Bebop. Ed gives Spike a pinwheel toy. Ian hears something strange and goes outside to check. We then see Ed walking away from the ship with her belongings. 
Ian, the super intelligent dog, knows exactly what's going on when he gets out of the ship. This might be the last time he'll see his friends. He's conflicted, but chooses to go with Ed. Jet finishes making dinner and looks to find his crew and sees no one but Spike. He looks out the window and sees a goodbye sign from Ed. Spike and Jet say nothing. Neither of them are comfortable with what just happened. They lost something important and don't want to say anything because they're afraid of what the other person might think. Instead of waiting in awkward silence, they make it seem like they can't say anything. They stuff each and every boiled egg away hiding how they feel and what they think. Some might be hesitant to watch Cowboy Bebop due to its episodic nature and lack of an overarching narrative, but it works. Details about the characters are sprinkled throughout the story to give the audience an idea of why a character is doing what they're doing. For example, Spike mentions Jet's mechanical arm in episode 5, and later in episode 16, we learn the full story. Cowboy Bebop creates gaps in our understanding of a character, and then later explores that aspect. This is another reason why Cowboy Bebop resonates with many. We learn about our main cast with little bits and pieces. You almost feel like you're learning about a real person, due to the small drops of hints leading to a bigger picture. This approach is used effectively with Spike. Also in Episode 5, Spike finally meets with his old teammate, Vicious. After they duel, Spike falls out the window of the cathedral. While falling, Spike's life flashes before his eyes. Later, this scene is recontextualized to show that Spike was literally looking into the past due to his eye. Spike Mike feels that he's in a dream after he somehow manages to survive after leaving the syndicate. He should be a dead man and should have left with Julia. Spike gets nothing and has to live with the emptiness of not having the one person he cares about most in his life. The way Spike feels is dived into as early as episode 6. In this episode, the gang is looking for a bounty. Their guy dies after being shot and falling out of a building, but who kills him leaves the crew puzzled. Spike encounters the killer and finds out that he can't age after a gate accident that killed everyone that he knew but left him seemingly immortal. The experience of living a life without anyone he cared about left him empty and looking for a way out, but he can't do anything about it. This is where Spike comes in. At this point in the episode, Spike has no reason to continue engaging with Wen. The bounty is gone, and they already have the guy Wen was using. The reason Spike goes after Wen is because on some level, he understands how Wen feels, and he wants freedom. Wen and Spike both have a <coughs> wish. Even when Spike fights Parrot Fu, he jokes about the possibility of this being his last battle. Tragically, what Spike wants is to break out of the dream that he's in, and find out if he's really alive. He cares about the Bebop crew deep down, but can't live without his lost love. Spike tells others to get over the past when he hangs on to it more than anyone else in the crew. After Spike kills Wen, Wen talks about how calm he feels now that it's over, and asks Spike if he understands. Spike responds by agreeing, and then finishes by saying, as if. Spike then throws Wen's harmonica while doing his classic bang. This scene is followed up when Spike goes on his last battle and does his classic bang sign to all the grunts. This shows that Spike did, in fact, meet his end at the end of the story, as he's finally able to understand the relief Wen felt. These little details help build the larger narrative and characterize the characters of the story. All these moments show how well made Cowboy Bebop is, from the parallels to metaphors about striped cats relating to our cast and reminiscing about the past. Paired with its great action and music. Cowboy Bebop deserves every ounce of praise it receives. The characters feel alive as we see them in their highest moments and in their lows. And till this day, it stands against the test of time.